mix for me. <laughs> Man, that's an awful big cup there. Huh? I said, that's an awful big cup. It's a good thing there's no rum in there. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Mm. No, nah, just root beer. Hey, Ray, did you ever make a decision if we're going to be going to the rehab tomorrow? Um, well, it de probably depends on how success at getting the video thing, the, the lavalier. I I've done the lavaliers where they plug directly in that camera and you get a perfect experience and if you try to use the microphone i even have a real a directional microphone that goes on top of that camera and it's not it doesn't even come close to comparing to how good the lavaliers are all right let's give people a moment or two to get on and then i will kick us off here officially in another 60 to 90 seconds um and we'll get started While we're just hanging out, you know, we're not going to be able to get, according to Pat, we're not going to be able to, that rehab, that burn job is going to be too, too far along for our bus tour to really get a lot out of that. Um, but uh, by then, we should, I'm hoping we'll bring either our third or fourth Airbnb online, and that might be a good place to go, just to show what we're doing and how we did it. Yeah, and then we also need to start buying some more houses over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I'm all for that. All right, it is 6.03. Uh, let's go ahead and kick off. Welcome, everybody, to our weekly live training. Uh, it's yours truly, James Haney, with here, here with Ray Sasser. Um, and then we got our producer in the background. Um, uh, his name is Hal Gailey. Uh, he's also one of our lifesavers. So we're going to go ahead tonight and we're going to jump right in and talk about a very important topic that you should actually already be thinking about. And that is kicking off 2022 on the right foot and hit it running. So we got to close out 2021 and then we got to start off 2022 on the right foot and take advantage of all the opportunities that are fixing to come available. So before we get started, as I do every week, drop a comment, let us know where you're tuning in from, introduce yourself, let us know, are you wholesaling, are you flipping, and things of that nature. And with that being said, I'm going to hand the show over to Ray for a few minutes. How are we doing tonight, Ray? I'm doing fine. I'm just curious on this, on these goal setting and the KPIs, do you want, are we going deep or are we going wide? Um, let's, let's go, let's go an inch deep and two inches wide. Okay. You can't go down <laughs> to rabbit holes. Okay. Uh, cause we know that you love rabbit holes, but let's keep those to a minimum. We got about 50 minutes here. So, uh, let's give our audience, let's give them some nuggets. Let's give them some things that they can write down and put into action, uh, and get started with, but yes, you can go down some rabbit holes, right? You know, um, Early on, like I was in the service, and I, this, the thing they talk about readers or leaders, you know, that is so true. And now with technology, we don't have to be readers anymore. We just have to have a good phone that has Audible on it. And you can almost effectively read anything out there. And there's so many smart people. And I was in the, I was in the service. And I read a book on goal setting. So I was literally less than 21 because I, I got out of the service when I was 21. I had four years in by the time I was 21. But the, it was about goal setting. And it's like, when I read that book, the, the thing I remember the most is I felt like I had control over my life when I did the goal setting. That was probably the biggest takeaway is it's like, if you have goal setting, you can have dreams, you can realize those dreams. And there's probably really nothing you can't accomplish. In fact, you're probably not going to dream big enough. You know, you're not going to set that uh, big, hairy, audacious goal. In fact, that, that's called a, a BHAD, 
if you ever see those letters, that's big, hairy, audacious goal. And most of us aren't brave enough to have those goals. And I'll admit I was one of them. I just wanted to like, I think like everybody else, like get the first house, make the first. And I didn't even want, I didn't have the courage to think past that first house. I just wanted to figure out how to do that. But, um, you know, goal set, anything goal setting is good because it re-inspires you and it gives you hope and gives you passion. And so to me, goal setting has always been important. Have I always been good at it? No, but I don't give up. I'm too dumb to give up. So I just keep plugging away and plugging away. It's like the smoking. They said that the average smoker has to try seven times before, before they're successful. So my way, and it's like, how do you try seven times as quick as possible? I quit every day. <laughs> when you're unconscious, huh? Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, I did I did come up with some um, some metrics and some KPIs and some goals and it, I I think if we just do anything today, we should try to accomplish uh, uh, or not accomplish but set out in our mind like how to put these goals into different categories and talk about those categories. Like I've come up with I think six different categories. And then talk about some KPIs that would be important to pay attention in each category. And then and then come up with a plan. So right now, and, I, and let me just wrap up real quick. I know you got something ready to come out of your mouth, but just we don't want to wait to January 1st to come up with a plan. We want to, we want to start thinking about it now. We want to start writing some of these things down. If, if something we say is important, then put it in the comments or write it down. And and let's talk, let's talk about what we should think are important for us. And I'm going to put, I'm going to put words and names on these different things. And I'm going to hit every category I could think of. And, and I, uh, some of these things I've been really successful at, some of these things I'm still struggling with, but we can go through them. And do you want to hear the categories, James, that, that, that I think we should talk about? First of all, KPI. Key performance indicators. So we need to, we need to make sure if we give acronyms, we need to make sure that we uh, explain what those are because some people may not um, grasp that. Yeah. So a key performance indicator might be if you have a buyer's list, um, how many buyers are on that list? That would be a key performance indicator. If you're networking at an event, how many people did you really connect with? Uh, anything, I mean, it could be in any category, but yeah. So, and some of these things are so important that we have to, we have to track them, especially if we're really trying to do stuff that's hard for us. Okay. So go, go ahead. I just, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. I just wanted to make okay. sure. That that so happened. some of the categories, and these are categories I want to talk about. And if we want to, we can drill down in it and all of them maybe on a, a shallow level. But then if any one of these things really, really seem super important, then we can really talk about it in terms of how we've used it, adopted it. So the different categories, as I would put, is living, just, just your life, you know, your time, your family, your friends, just taking away time. In the book called The Richest Man in Babylon, one of the biggest, the first time I read it, I remember like it was yesterday, and I try to read that every couple of years, but the... Uh, one of the biggest takeaways is in the richest man in Babylon, they tell stories and there's kind of a moral to the story. Um, and it takes, it takes place in the Babylonian era. Uh, but big, big, one of the big takeaways, the first time I read it was pay yourself first. In other words, you have to take care of yourself first. Whatever your goal is, whatever your plan is, pay yourself first. And so in this if there was a number one category, it's live your life. I mean, this, uh, however you think about it, you're alive now. This is your time to be alive. This is your prime time. You know, whether you're 20 or 60, this is your prime time. You need to do it. So uh, living, which means spend time with family and friends as a lifelong introvert. It's really hard for me to easily engage with people. In fact, a mastermind session we went to, uh, this past week, we really talked about how different people respond differently in different environments and, and how they how they 
are able to cope with that. So we all have problems coping and being perfect and being the right person in the right place at the right time. But really, we really got to work on that. We got to really work on caring about other people. The, the, the messages we tell ourselves about how people are treating us are very, very important. If we think our people are out to get us, we're going to behave differently than if we think about like, well, bless his soul, he just doesn't understand. You know, you can have a different attitudes about the same event. You know, you can't control what happens to you totally, but you can control how you think about it. So living, time, family, friends, that's, that's one thing. And we could talk a little bit about that. Another thing I put in there is a bucket list. And I'm not a bucket list kind of guy that's going to say, hey, I got these 73 items and I'm going to do them. But I do have things that I really want to do. I mean, I remember sitting in Latin class in high school and the teacher talked about the Latin and Roman history and all that stuff. And so finally we got to go to Europe, spent about a month in Europe, got to check out a lot about Europe. And it's like, that was good. And it wasn't on my bucket list. No, but it, it was something that was important to me and I wanted to do it. And so I think you got to come up with 10 or 20 things that, that you, you say, look, these things, I'm going to get these done. And, and this is when it comes to goal setting, when you want to do something, you start getting fixated on it. You start looking at information on it. Next thing you know, you look for ways to get it done, and it just happens. And so uh, the, the people that know me real good know that I'm a serious Civil War uh, hist history fan or not. And uh, I've probably been to every major Civil War battlefield site, not on purpose, but because it was important to me because I knew I would be in the area because I would go out of my way a little bit to be a part of that and to understand it. And it's, it's really, really been fun for me. Um, the other thing, another category is education. There's no way, especially when you really start getting this real estate thing down, education never ends. You know, I, I was going to two or three national events every year for 38 years. Now it's going to be five or six times. I'm actually doubling the amount of time that I'm spending. You know, I'm looking at doing something in Ohio on November 4th and over November 7th. I'm going to Florida to hang out with Pete for three or four days in December. Um, and so the so you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this next year if I go to 10 or 12 out-of-town events or big name events. So uh, education, it never ends. Uh, and we just got to, we got to narrow down what we want to do. And we'll, we can talk about some of that. The, if we do anything on KPIs tonight, I'd like to talk some KPIs on business, money, and health. Those are the final three. And we can drill down into those. I think those would be the three that I'd want to spend a little bit of time tonight. Um, because this is more of a real estate, um, um, you know, uh, platform. And it's for, it's for real estate investors by us real estate investors. So I want to really talk about those things um, more probably than anything else tonight. So a little bit, of, I want to kind of set the tone and, and kind of explain a little bit why we're talking about this tonight. For one, goal setting is really important. And it's really important to not only set your goals up here, but actually write them down and Put them on your wall, on your mirror, on your bedroom door, where you're going to, you know, see it every single day. And it's constantly going to be in your mind. OK, so that's one thing. It's very important because if you're just going out there, you don't have anything that you're shooting for. You know, it's just like, you know, when you're negotiating a deal, you have a, a, a target price that you want to get on that particular deal. You know, there's a reason for it. And knowing that ahead of time, and it's the same thing with setting goals. There's a reason you have your eye on the target down the road that you want to get to. Um, and then the next step is these KPIs, the key performance indicators that, that we keep talking about, uh, because it's one thing to have goals, but now you got to know, are you on the right track to achieve those goals? So you have to track your, your performance. You have to track your progress. And so that's why we're talking a lot about this tonight. You know, yeah. just like Ray said a little while ago, you wait till January 1, the race has already started, okay? So we're, we're getting ahead, you know, and actually technically we're actually a little bit behind here, but we're still getting a good enough head start that as soon as that race begins, we're right there. We're ready to go. 
you know, what's funny is like, I would psych myself up ready, getting ready for January one and Charles Nguyen and I were doing the meeting three or four years ago and it was October. And he said, Ray, I've already started working on my goals for 2022. He says, I'm not waiting till January one so that I can implement something over the next three or four months. He's like, I'm starting now and January one, those things will already be in place. And if you think about it, that's the only way it can be. You've got to hit the ground running. So we're going to have to, all of us have to pick several things and really try to come up with a plan. If, if we have kind of the big, the 20,000 foot goal, then we can break that down into small pieces. So um, you, let's talk a little bit about business and financial first. Okay. Cause I want to talk about cover three categories tonight, business, financial, uh, money, just some ideas on money and health. And I, and if, is that okay with you, James? Does that seem like a good topic? Yes. I give you permission to do that. Okay. So one of the, one of the things that, um, that we came across, I want to say seven years ago was Gino Wickman's book on traction. There's two traction books out there, but this, you can listen to audio audible, uh, a lot of these audible things, you can get a PDF with the audible and you can download. And this is one of those kind of books that has a PDF download that you need to get. If you don't buy the book, but do the audio, then you can do it. Um, but we started doing the level 10 meeting and a level 10 meeting, although I have never done it just by myself, you can do a level 10 meeting by yourself. And a level 10 meeting is just how to set how to, it's a, a smart way to set long-term goals and to break them down into small pieces so that you can actually break them down into, you're going from a long-term goal to literally a daily to-do list. And, and it's just a very, very smart way to put that together. And so I would, well, I would say, if you don't, if you haven't read or listened to that book, listen to it immediately, implement level 10 meetings, especially if you've got small groups, uh, implement that uh, right away. And there's just so much value. And the key is, what do I need to do today to get to where I want to be three to five years? And that book gives you the blueprint on how to do that. So what, what was the name of that book again? it's called Traction. And it's, uh, we call them and then the weekly meetings, we call them week, uh, level 10 weekly meetings. And uh, Gino Wickman, and I believe that's G-I-N-O, Wickman uh, is the author of that book. So um, number one, that's something you got to take that down as quick as you can. Listen to it on Audible, go for a walk, you know, spend time by yourself and just listen to it. But get that, get that under your belt as quick as possible. Because it's really important if we come up with goals, it's not enough to just say, hey, I'm going to lose 80 pounds. You got to break that down into pieces, right? You got to break that down into 30 or 40 different bite-sized pieces. And you just got to start taking those pieces one at a time. You're never going to get there. Another thing that I recommend everybody do is a balance sheet and a profit and loss. So a balance sheet, and I don't mean for your company, I mean for you. So a balance sheet is, is a way of saying, where am I at in my life? If I've got a balance sheet going to say my assets and my liabilities. So it's going to say, hey, I've got $10,000 in the bank and I've got $50,000 worth of liabilities. Whatever it is, it's just a snapshot of where you are financially now. And I think if, if James would say to me, Ray, I need you to drive to Chicago tomorrow, the first thing I'd have to do is figure out where I'm starting from, right? So if I'm, if I'm going to build and develop financial health, then I got to know where I'm starting from. Because it doesn't matter if it's a great place or a bad place. It only matters that you know where you're at. Because only then can we know if we're making an improvement. And what's really shocking is you think you know the truth on, on what numbers make sense in this. Just intellectually, you know, say, you, you can say to yourself, I'm a smart guy. I've done all kinds of real estate investing. And some of those things, you know, when you look at them at the end of the year, you think, oh, my gosh, you know, I made it boatload of money on that. I increased my net worth. I did this. And then something else you spent five times as much time on and you lost money. So the lesson, you know, without that feedback, it's sort of like a servo system, a servo, the 
point of servo is you have negative air voltage when you get off track electronically, you get off track. The servo by that air voltage recenters itself. So that's what you're doing here. You're basically a servo, you're seeking in on your target. And the way to seek in on that target is to know which direction you're moving and how you're moving. And you need to reevaluate that. But in my opinion, a balance sheet should be done quarterly. And even if you don't do it quarterly and you do it once a year, that, that's okay. Just start thinking of that. But when you start dealing with this, um, there's a concept called being mindful. And when you start being mindful of things, you start paying attention to things, you start watching what you're doing, and you start focusing on those, on those issues. So there are certain things in life that we always want to be mindful of, like you know, listen to my wife. Always be mindful that when she's talking, I should be listening. You know, that's don't be mindful. Right huh? Is she close by you right now? I don't think so. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I've had to learn that lesson over and over. So, um, but be mindful because it is important. You know, uh, so the ba that's a balance sheet. Now, a profit and loss just shows where you're at on a particular project. But if you if you're running projects, you should be closing out your, your projects once a week, right? It, it, your profit and loss for that project. You should know where you're at on that. Uh, and if you don't, you can, and I've done it many times, you get in trouble, you get upside down, you're, um, you think that you're, do, you're in, a, in a project at a certain point and you realize uh, I'm not there at all. And, and maybe you can, start, you can brute force your way through one or two little mistakes like that. But what if you're running five rehabs or 10 rehabs? You can't get away with it. Um, uh, business and financial, I'll put lead generation in here. And some of the categories would be like qualified leads, the cost per lead, uh, the return on your investment, what, what it's costing. If I'm buying a property and I'm doing the lead generation for that property, what is that cost? Because what if you spend $5,000 getting leads and you're paying a wholesaler $5,000. Maybe it's better to drop the getting the leads and work on getting wholesaler. But the math will show you that. Or it might be, hey, my ROI, my return on, on the investment is dropping. So I need to look at a different way to do this. Um, some other things is uh, um, uh, under business and financial is some of the commitments that you may be taking on. I tend to take on too many commitments. And so you got to be real careful with that. Uh, and then we do, we actually had, it was, a, we used to have a, a meeting once a week called the low performing and uh, non-performing assets. So we would look at those weekly. It's, and now what that means to you could mean something different to me, right? So um, uh, you got to think about that. And so we changed that. We, not, we don't call that low-performing, non-performing chart because it's too big of a mouthful. We call it, now we just call it an up report. So weekly, our goal is to do an up report. And it's essentially the same thing. We just made it simpler for us to, to verbalize it. And that's called an underperforming asset. So every week we look at what are underperforming assets. So, and that's effectively low-performing and non-performing. So, and once we look at that on a regular basis, then instead of me going three weeks and deal and not dealing with an issue, I'm dealing with it every week. Every week we're dealing with it. And what's important is because of the group of people I'm around and because I make it important, it becomes important for them too. And then all of us are now thinking about, oh, that's this is turning into an un underperforming asset. We can't take our eyes off the ball. So, so on business and financial, those are some of the KPIs, some of the things that I would do uh, to see where I was under business and financial. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? Yeah, that makes total sense. Uh, so guys, to our audience, uh, guys and gals, uh, if you have any questions in regards to what we're talking about, and this goes for tonight and all of our live trainings, you know, these are meant to be interactive. So if you have a question or you have a comment, uh, drop that in the comment section. You know, like for example, tonight, if you have a specific category that you may include that we may not talk about, go ahead and drop that in the comment section. Uh, you know, or if Ray says, you know, hey, write this down, 
you know, put that in the comment section as well, uh, you know, because that's going to help not only you, but it'll help other people as well. And you know, we want this to be a community uh, to help each other. Uh, yeah. So <clears throat> I'll turn it back over to you, Ray. Yeah. So the next category, I, I put this in here and I've always, when I worked for, when I got out of service, and I went, went to work for Burroughs. I never asked for a raise. And I don't, I don't even think I was working for money. I know that sounds stupid, but they just kept giving me paychecks. And I literally would take, and it was when I was single, but I'd take those paychecks and throw them in the glove box. And I, and I never, I never focused on the money part of it. And so I think I was right in that sense, because I do believe money will take care of itself, but we got to think of money as like our employees and we got to make money work for us. Like it's our, our employees. So um, I know this sounds roundabout, but like I started out as a rehabber, but I learned early on through people like Jimmy Napier that, Hey, there's ways that we build wealth and there's certain things in, uh, that we have to constantly keep our eye on, which is the money. Our money is, is basically our army to do the work that we want to do. So we want to hold on to the money quite naturally. And there's certain, certain things that we want to look at on money. And we measure money in a bunch of different ways. So I always want to be focused on the money working and doing its job. Not like when I was, got out of the service and I would just throw the paychecks in the glove box. You know, I think I was always been frugal and and I had a low cost of living until, you know, your life gets more complicated. You get a wife, you get children, you get, you know, mortgage. All of a sudden, it's a it's a whole different ball game. But if I were looking at money, some of the things I would look at is return on equity. So in other words, if I have um, if I have a million dollars in equity, what's my return on that equity? And you might be surprised. It might be very low. And and I don't pay a lot of attention because I've always been a super active buyer. And, and I thought, you know what? Let the equity take care of itself. If I don't maximize that, but I do maximize uh, creating new, getting new assets and they're cash flowing and, they're, and the equity's increasing, then that's fine too. But that's something to think about. Uh, that's one metric. It's not the most important money metric to me. But uh, look at that. The other one is ROI, return on investment. So always think, I do think about that a lot. You know, I think of ROI in several ways. One is about return on investment and, and what that investment does for me. It might be, it's an investment in a person. It might be, it's investment in a project. It might be investment in, in uh, something that's supposed to generate income. So uh, so we just got to look at that. We got to look at our ROI on the stuff that we're doing in our time that we're spending. We had a, I think you got off the coaching call last night when this came up, but uh, one of the people on the coaching call was going to put a big chunk of money down on a deal. And it's like, okay, well, if I could borrow, and I'm not saying they were wrong at all, but I'm just saying, if I can borrow that money at three and a half or 4%, then that's going to be, what I'm making with that hundred thousand dollars, so I'd probably be better off borrowing at three and a half or four percent and getting that hundred thousand dollars working in other ways because there's a good chance, and and you'll see this as you as you start doing more and more investing, it's not unusual for investors to get 10, 15, 20, 30 percent yields on their investment. So when we when we're putting our money in deals, we've got to think about that. Um, Cap rate, I don't want to talk too much about cap rate, but in simple terms, a cap rate is the yield that you get on an investment. So if I put a million dollars in a project, then if it's got a cap rate of 6%, then that's that yield that I'm going to get on, on, that, on, that, um, on that investment. So cap rates are important because somebody will buy an apartment and their basic apartment complex and they're saying, hey, I'm buying the management. I'm doing everything. It's going to be a turnkey deal. What's my cap rate? If they say, oh, the cap rate here is 4% or the cap rate here is 12%, then that's telling you the yield. It's a way to measure how one investment might compare to the other. And we could talk, I believe I could talk an hour on cap rate, but the, the point is, is if all things are equal, 
a cap rate of six is always better than a cap rate of four because that means my yield is going to be 6%. My rate of return is 6% versus 4%. If there's things I can do to change that cap rate now to where it goes up to 10% on the same investment, then that's I'm, I'm hitting home runs. If, there, if the cap rate goes down and I'm getting lower and lower cap rates, then I'm probably not doing what I need to be doing. Um, a lot of people equate cap rates with risk. And there is some relationship, but it, a lot of times risk is based on what you know about what you're doing and the opportunities you get. So cap rate's a pretty fun number. To, it's something I would try to understand better if you don't understand it. It's not easy to come to grips with what a cap rate is because there's three different ways of looking at cap rate. So I would just try to familiarize yourself with that. Uh, a really, and this kind of comes off your balance sheet, but look at your net worth. Right, that's what a balance sheet gives us. We look at net worth is just saying, hey, um, uh, I've got $100,000 in the bank and I have $50,000 in liability. My net worth is $50,000. What's it gonna be next January one? Is it gonna be 40,000 or 60,000? Is it gonna be 200,000? For the people that own a lot of property, in fact, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about doing my net worth this year because people that own property, their, their um, appreciation across the board, we're mostly residential, appreciation across the board is increased by about 15 to 20%. So the assets that people own have increased in value by 20%. So if you don't, didn't do nothing last year, but just sit on your property, you're now worth 20% more than you were last year at this time. So if you were worth 1 million last year, you're worth 1,200,000 last year. And if you, if you were buying real estate and the, and the um, tenants or the user of that real estate is paying that mortgage down, you're not only increasing by the, the this amazing amount of appreciation we're getting, you're also, uh, your your net worth's increasing because your debt is dropping. So uh, our net worth is a really good number. Another good number is, and don't dwell on this, but is your net worth divided by your years. So if you're 50 years old and your net worth's $50,000, you can say in roundabout numbers is that you've added about $1,000 a year of your life to uh, uh on average, than your net worth. And then when you start looking at that, you say, well, what if I bought a house and I didn't sell it? What if I wholesaled it instead of wholesaling that house, I didn't sell it. And I, and I got $30,000 of equity in that deal. Well, my net worth, not counting appreciation, not counting debt reduction, my net worth increased $30,000. And you're gonna be shocked, but you're gonna find out that your net worth is gonna start growing really fast when you figure out how to hold on to assets. If you can figure out, and that's not easy, but if you can, and we want, we, that's what Massive Pass is all about. How do we hold on to these assets and not give it all away, right? So if we can figure that out, that network divided by years is gonna go up. It's gonna go up rapidly. So I, I like that number. Um, another number I, I really like, I'm starting like more and more, but I don't like it because of the negative connotation is liquid assets. If you need to have a plan of what your liquid assets are going to be, and then you can then you can go from there. Um, and you need that because it's your it's your safety valve. If things go wrong, are you going to be able to buy groceries? So, and liquid assets can kind of come in different forms. Like a house is not considered liquid assets because it's hard to convert a house into money. And What's amazing about that statement is it used to be real hard, but now the world's mature, real estate investing is mature. You can, you can take money out of a house very quickly in many different ways. Even if you have a 500 credit score, there's lots of ways. These, this real estate is a lot more liquid just because people can move in and out of it a lot faster. Um, another thing to look at is like, and I don't do this, but I had a guy tell me he does it. And you basically take what your, your, um, your net, uh, what the equity growth you have and your liquid assets, you add those numbers up 
you divide that by the number of hours that you work a week, and that becomes your hourly wage. It's there's investors that have five that make every hour that they're alive, they make five hundred dollars a month. In fact, we had one on a panel. I mean, pardon me, five hundred dollars an hour. We had one on the panel the other day, and that's what he does. And he doesn't do nothing. When he goes to bed, he plays all day long, and then he, you know, does his thing. And he got it all through single family houses. And he told me what his hourly wage was. And I think he said it's $500 an hour every day. And that's days he's not doing things. It might actually go up if he actually was working. Um, And then, of course, we just want to, I think we want to figure out how to get passive income go as high as we can. And so I would have a, a KPI for that. And so if we're looking at money, these are some of the measuring sticks that we could use. And I think they're good to use. I think. And maybe it won't, if you're just starting, they won't be overwhelming. But I think if you start and then you have a plan, then these numbers, you're going to be mindful of these things, like your return on your investment, what your yield is on your investments, like your cap rate, uh, what your net worth is. You start paying attention to that and you're going to make improvements every year. You're going to look back and say, what did I, what could I do better? And, and it's not unusual if you're a wheeler dealer to be out there losing money too. So that's, I mean, that's okay, you know, but what is our net worth at the end of, at the, end of the period? So those are some of the things under money that I would be looking at for KPIs. A lot of great stuff, Ray. Thank you. We, we appreciate that. I think you wanted to also touch on health, but before we get into the health, I want to let you guys know, if you have these goals in mind or you're looking for help to set your goals, and then you want to know how you can work with us and how we can help you reach your goals, track your your progress and everything, drop a comment below and comment the word success. And either myself or somebody on our team will reach out to you within the next day or two. And we'll have a short conversation uh, on how we can help you with your goals and how we can help you reach your goals. Because it's one thing, like I said earlier, one thing to have goals, but you got to be able to track your progress and you got to make sure that you're on track. One other thing I want to mention about goals is you can set goals, but have it keep in mind that you're going to get thrown curveball. You're going to be thrown off track. You just have to pick yourself up, dust your shoulder off and put one foot in front of the other and keep going and make sure that you're going for that long range target. Okay. So again, you want more information on, on how we can help you get to reach your goals and help you set your goals. Drop success in the comments and we'll be in touch with you. Uh, so, Ray, I'm going to hand it back over to you. Yeah, you know, the uh, James, the, oh, as you're saying that, it reminded me of that little gif that you see. And it says uh, it doesn't matter that you get knocked down seven times. It only matters that you get up eight. Exactly. And I, and I think that that's that's that life is going to deal you bad hands. So they're, just get over it. Right. No matter how, no matter how, whatever kind of hand it dealt you with, so what? It's it's yesterday, and just get over it. And uh, things aren't going to work out right. And you you're in total control of what you do after this call's over. You're in total control of what you do tomorrow morning at six a.m. You're in total control of everything. And so you got to decide what is it that's going to get you there. Just like in the traction book, what do I? What are my goals? What are the things that are going to get me there? How do I break it down? And how do I start taking action? Um, So let's talk about health because without, we know now that your your cognitive abilities are related to your diet. Uh, Your physical fitness is obviously related to your diet um, and, and what you eat and what you do. So we're learning. I mean, the science is out there. We're learning that, hey, we don't have to take massive amounts of um, supplements and we don't have to take massive kinds of pills. We have to, we have to live a healthy lifestyle. And if you're going to do that, then some of the metrics are, and to me, it's, it's more important that you measure this stuff than it is that you um, say, I'm just going to go and run five miles tomorrow. It's more important that you just be of the mindset. You're going to take some steps backwards and, you're going to fall down seven times and you're going to have to get up the eighth time and you just keep going for it. 
if I was going to measure these things, here's some things I would measure. Measure your BMI. That's your body mass index. It's a, it's a ratio between how tall you are and essentially how much mass there is in your body. You know, that if you got too much mass for your height, then your BMI is going to be out of whack. So measure your body mass index. And what's good about this stuff, you can Google this. You can Google it. You can, on the side of my desk, there's a chart that shows body fat. Just by looking at people, you can tell what their body fat is. And so pick that number. What is your body fat going to be? Do you want it to be 35%? Do you want 20%? Do you want 6%? Do you want 12%? You can actually see what somebody with a body fat at 12% looks like. You can see what, a, and you can Google this. It's out there. You can see what somebody with body fat at 35%. But look at your BMI. You know, your BMI probably should be 22, 23. And that means like somebody that's six, one, like me should weigh 170 pounds. And it's like, Oh my God, I haven't weighed 170 pounds since I was 11, you know, 12 years old. But if you look at the math and, and we do know that the condition you're in makes a difference. So a BMI is a good number to know. Another thing is fitness measure yourself. I remember the first time I did the Murph with uh, which was CrossFit. We did the MRF is basically you, you measure for time how long it takes you to run a mile, how long it takes you to do 100 pull-ups, how long it takes you to do 200 push-ups, 300 squats, and then you end it with a mile. And it's like most people can, in the, on the face of this planet, most people can't even do that. So your goal might be like, I want to do a half MRF, which is a half a mile, 50 pull-ups, 100 push-ups, 150 squats. And the first time I did a MRF, the it took me 48 minutes. And there were guys and girls, women, that were finishing a MRF in 25 and 30 minutes. And it's like, oh, how can anybody be in that kind of shape? And it's but as you start tracking these things, you'll be surprised. We had um, there's a lady I know, I won't say her name, but she was way overweight. She was a school teacher. She was in, um, she was actually a coaching student and we weren't talking about physical fitness, but she just got inspired and she started changing her life. Next thing you know, you don't, you can't recognize her anymore because she's lost 70 pounds. She's competing in triathlons. She, I, I'm connected with her on Facebook. I occasionally see her going to hiking up some big mountain somewhere. And it's like, you can do that. You're in control of that. And it, and could she have done a MRF? In her first week or first month, no, she wouldn't have been able to do it. Can she do one now? Yes. And so you, these goals are not achievable if you don't get up and start moving. And so the key is, is make fitness number one and keep moving and measure things. Measure what you're doing. And another big mistake I see is people, they get, they get frustrated because they, um, they get hurt or something changes and they and they get out of the routine and they don't get back in the routine. And so we just don't let it, let that happen. And as a person has failed many, many times, um, I know exactly how that feels in that regard. So just get over it, right? Get over it and say, I'm back out there and just don't get in a big hurry. If you show up, then the health will take care of itself. Um, there's things, you know, there's more diabetics in the United States than ever. And diabetes is killing us. Well, we can measure that. We can control that. We can change how we behave. We can change how we eat. So those are some metrics that you can look at. There's a bunch of other metrics like our cholesterol and our LDL and HDL. This stuff is so easy to measure that it's worthwhile to measure. So, but without our health, I mean, you're talking, health means now that I'm 65, I have a lot of friends that have died at, that were my age. They're no longer with us. They're a couple of years younger, a couple of years older. And almost always it's because they had an unhealthy lifestyle. And yet there's going to be other guys that are going to be, um, they're going to be in their eighties cognitively. They're going to be there. They're going to be active. You know, when we were in Tennessee, James, just walking up that driveway, I had to take, that was a pretty long driveway for people who aren't, weren't there. It was a pretty long driveway in that mastermind group. So we're, we're walking up the driveway and it's so friggin' steep. I had to rest twice. And the guy that I was with, he's my age and he didn't have to rest at all. So I've got to do some, I've got to buckle down. I can't let that, that guy do that to me. You know, I got to try to stay there with him.
but it's just amazing how bad a shape you can let yourself get in. And it's amazing how fast you can turn it around. If you want something to read inspirational on getting, getting healthy is uh, I would recommend it's a fun book. It's not about, you know, and they're not going to throw tons of numbers at you. It's a real story about a guy and his friendship with his dog and how both of those, the dog and himself turned their lives around and became really healthy. And, and that book is Walking with Petey, P-E-E-T-Y. It's a great fun listen to. It's a good book to listen to and go for a walk. And it's inspirational. Can we get a volunteer to drop that in the comment uh, so <laughs> everybody else can see it? Again, that's Walking with Petey. Uh, and trust me, it, it's a really good book. Ray's told me about it, I think about 12 or 1300 times, uh, <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> Did you actually read it or listen to it? Um, I have not yet. I have to admit. <laughs> it's inspirational and it's fun. And it, it was, it wasn't about a crazy person doing crazy things to get in shape. I, I think if you can get up to where you've told me 1500 times, I'll think then You'll you'll have worn me down, and I'll, I'll I'll break down and read it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was just the inside joke, inside jab to to Ray. Uh, yeah. We love working together. We do that all the time. We do it on our radio show. We do it, you know, <laughs> on here. We just have a lot of fun. So I would think that these are BM. These are uh, KPIs that we, we you could pick your own KPI. But if you measure yourself in these different categories, and again, for me, those categories were um, a bucket list, my the the KPIs for living uh, and life, uh, like spending time with your family and making sure that the the really really close people, important people, that you're giving them the time that they need. That's something I've been really bad at. And I think that's type A personalities are always going to be bad at, and they got to work harder. Uh, your education, decide that you're going to, you're going to get involved. You know, we, um, what I've seen, like with our RIAs, we've been running RIAs and been part of the RIA leadership for a long time. The people that show up on a regular basis, they're getting that, that regular dose of that medicine that you get from being around other investors. They stay focused and they tend to be successful and tend to do things. Um, so surround yourself with the people you want to be like, and then be around and find out who the smart ones are, the best educators and learn from them. And then, um, so education and then business, we talked about some of the KPIs for business and then some of the money numbers, those are more clearly number, uh, KPIs. And then of course, health, you can't forget about health. Another, another thing to add to the education, uh, for one, Ray, you've been doing the real estate investing, you know, for 38, 39 years, you've been running RIAs, but I could see that when we were in that, that mastermind last week, uh, you know, you know, even though that's your world, you know, you were still getting a lot out of it. Oh yeah. You came back this week, you know, and you're, you know, you're more fired up, you're more pumped, you know, and it, it really helped. The other thing is another gentleman on that panel that Ray, you know, mentioned a few minutes ago, he actually sets aside in his budget, his financial budget, he has a certain amount that's dedicated just for education. You know, and this guy has done, you know, hundreds and hundreds, you know, probably over a thousand transactions, but he always wants to educate himself. Yeah, uh, you're, you're talking about Sam? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Sam was uh, very fun to be around. And what amazed me about Sam is how many different things he's involved in and how he operates on a high level in everything. And you can't get that. You, you are not born with that. And if you're lucky enough to have parents that have pulled that off, it's still not enough because you're not going to be around your parents your whole life. But you've got to surround yourself with people that are doing amazing things because it. it if you don't know how to get that done, which is what the traction book is, we break these amazing things into little pieces and we just start working on them. Before you know it, these little pieces just start falling in place. And it's like, it's, it really can, it can be a wonderful life. I mean, it, it really can be cool and you, you can really enjoy things. 
Um, you know, you know, surrounding yourself with people that are doing this, you know, you really don't see the value until you actually do it and get out there. You know, another person on this, this panel, because what I'm about to say, I'm not going to mention any names, whether it's first or last, but there was a person uh, there that this person did not learn to read until they were 30 years old and to this day can't even really write. And yet they're a millionaire. Yeah, you know, so a millionaire. That person, that person can do it. You know, you should be able to do it. Let me tell you, the people that have to overcome obstacles are they look when you learn how to overcome obstacles then the obstacles that tend to stop normal people, they don't stop people like that because they've overcome them. It's like, it's just another day at work for them. Yeah, you know, and I, I kind of think like, my highest and best role in the, in the company that we have now is be the problem solver. Figure out how to overcome things because that's what I've been doing from day one. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I just, I'm in my comfort zone when I'm solving problems. It's not, I don't run from them. Well, maybe some of them I do, but I try not to run from them. So, <laughs> so guys, we got about, we got about nine or 10 minutes left. Uh, you know, I'm sure that Ray can go down another rabbit hole here in just a minute, but guys, if you have questions, this is a very important topic. This is something that you got to try to get right. It's very important to have, you know, your goals written down. And you got to write your goals a certain way. It sounds easy. It sounds simple, but there's a lot that goes into it. And then making sure that you're tracking yourself right. You know, do you guys have any questions? Do you have any suggestions, any comments? Uh, you know, let's, let's drop those in the comments and let's get those questions answered. And, you know, maybe let's talk about, you know, one or two of the comments uh, that you may have. Um, so I just wanted to throw that last call out there for questions and comments because we got about seven or eight minutes left. Well, one of the things, James, and just kind of maybe the, you'll call this a rabbit hole, but let's say let's say that you want to increase your net worth by two hundred thousand dollars next year. So how do you do that, right? So you kind of have a goal, and now you're going to say, well, how do I accomplish that goal? And what does that mean? Increase my net worth? Does that mean have equity? Does that mean I'm going to have cash in the bank? And you don't, you don't even try to solve the problem until you give yourself the problem. Until you ask yourself the right questions, you're not trying to solve that problem. So you got to figure out what the right questions are. And that's a perfectly fine question. I want to increase my net worth um, $50,000. I remember when I was 15 years old, I went to bed every night saying, I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to be a millionaire. And I never even thought about like, well, what does that mean? How do you do that? And the, and, um, but at some point, you're going to have to ask that question like, well, how do I do that? What do I do next? And then you're going to start going and exposing yourself to different ideas and different thoughts. And then you got to hopefully you, you land in a place where they're legit and not something like Bitcoin, where it's basically, you know, a luck of the draw kind of thing. We don't I, I, I don't get the day trading stuff either. But you look at something that has worked for a lot of people, and that tends to be owning your business or building out a business or uh, getting involved in investment properties. There's a reason why there's probably more millionaires that are involved in real estate than any other category and go with something like that and then find out, well, what are the guys that are really successful? Not the guys out there, not the gurus that are bragging, but what are the guys out there that are really doing it? And when I first got involved in real estate, I went to the focus group, or pardon me, I went to the, the workshops, not the general meeting. I went to those two, but it was hard to talk to people. When I went to the general, the uh, workshops where you're eating, you go to a restaurant or something, you're eating dinner with people and you can find, you can kind of interview them. In fact, I don't know if you know, but we're going to go Wednesday and there's a very, very famous person, at least in my world, that uh, we're going to try to interview Wednesday and um, we got to work out some technical stuff. We're trying to either be Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. Uh, I think it'll be Thursday. So we'll try to interview him. He lives in San Antonio and you hang around people like that. They're the legit people. They're the people that have done it. You find out what they did. You find out what, how you could do it. You find out like, Hey, I could never pull off that, but I could do this. 
And just like you're talking about the guy that's dyslexic, this is a guy that has, struggles to read, right? He struggles to read. So he, it's not like he can pick up a, a owner's manual and read the owner's manual. He's got to, he's got to work hard on improving his memory. He's got to work hard on using other tools. He's got to listen to audio books, but he did that. He, he figured out, look, I can't do what that guy did, but here's how I can adapt. Here's how I can modify. And then when you get to know these people and the people are really doing it, not the people who are trying to sell a course, but the people who are really doing it, they're not going to hesitate to spend the amount of time with you that you need. And, and I say that, um, I say that cautiously because nobody who's uh, like our buddy we we're talking about that's making five hundred dollars an hour can just freely give away his time at your beck and call. You know that's exactly why we do group coaching. I'm not gonna. I just cannot. I'm I'm too busy involved in our real estate company that I can't just give up. I can't answer the phone every time every time somebody calls. When our coaching call last night, I think we got off the phone. It was a two and a half hour coaching call, which is supposed to be an hour and a half. But it's like when you're there and you're sitting there, then you, if you're that kind of person, you're going to give freely and you're going to receive. And the givers always end up uh, in the best position. You just, in life, if you're a taker, it's not going to work out for you. I've never seen it work out for takers. Be the giver. Um, uh, and, and people are happy to share with you what works with them. So really quick, uh, Emma, one of our, our students and, and super volunteers, um, Emma, that book is Walking with Petey. Uh, and then we also had another question, two questions come through. Uh, so one, Ray, do you outsource your personal and business finances? And then the second question is, how do you come across these national real estate events and how do you know they'll be worth your time and investment? Well, if you post this group that we have here, massive, we've got two groups, Texas Real Estate Investment Community. That's for hardcore uh, investors looking to do deals. We're, we make that, we're trying to put all the tools out there for investors to actually do things that create a platform. It's very hard to get rid of all the spammers on Facebook, but we work really, really hard. Y'all just don't know how hard, but that's, that's for people in the, in the, in real estate commerce. That Facebook page is for real estate commerce. This Facebook page is for people who are trying to figure out how to get connected, who to learn, listen to, um, learn uh, answers to questions like, hey, I don't understand the cap rate. Can you ex explain what NOI means in the cap rate? You know, it's not designed to uh, be like a, a a training class, but on the other hand, it's for people who want to improve their education. So if somebody came in there and said, Ray, who would you recommend or who had the biggest influence on you that is still available, who would you recommend going to? Who would be the person you'd go to next? Or who would be the five people? Or if, if you can ask those questions, we'll share that because we, you know, all of us, there's about six of us that, that are part of Alamo Ria we're all of us are watching that. So if we can provide that we're next month, we're bringing Robin Thompson to um, San Antonio and Robin Thompson is, I mean, I've known her, I've been in personal mastermind groups with her. Robin Thompson is a force of nature. And any time somebody's a force of nature and they're doing what you want to do, you need to go hang out, hang out with them. And so uh, she comes to our, town every couple of years and come speaks at our group and it just so happens to be next month and if you're in san antonio and you don't go see her then then you're not gonna uh, you're gonna miss out but there's other people across the country who are just top notch and uh we're happy to share that with you if i knew more specifically about what your interests were i probably know the person personally i you know by the way gene, gene Greeno just passed away and he did assisted living residential assisted living. Gene was one of those guys that you could, uh, I interviewed him for an hour, a couple hours, uh, a couple of years ago. And he had such an influence on me and, you know, he's doing his thing. I'm doing mine, but his style, the way he would take on problems, the way he would solve problems, the way he could talk to an audience, 
it was just I learned it. I learned and gained so much for knowing him. And you got the exposure to self to people like the Gene Garinos of the world because you don't know if, how long they're going to be there. They could be gone tomorrow. So let me share that answer. Hopefully the person that asked that question is still watching. Um, but <clears throat> we got to wrap this up as soon as I, I finish this. A couple of things that I can answer that as far as real estate events. You know, one, if you're in Houston or San Antonio, you need to connect with the Alamoria. Uh, and again, send me a message or drop a comment and I can, you know, I can get you set up that way. But if you're not in Houston or San Antonio, look up the National RIA in your area and find the closest chapter to you. And if it's closest uh, to you, if it's close enough, then join that, that chapter of the National RIA and get connected, okay? One of the things that we do at our meetings is we will, we will network and we will answer questions uh, and we're very, very approachable. Um, as far as going to national events, that other people, we're connected with other RIA members uh, and other RIA leaders around the country. And, you know, we kind of feed off of them. You know, for one, we kind of have a good idea of who, like the Robin Thompson. We know that if Robin Thompson is going to be somewhere, we're going to be in that area. We're going to try to go hang out with her, you know, and there's a few others. Uh, we don't just go see. One of the things that we look for, if they're on the road 50 weeks out of the year, you know, and, and they're a quote unquote guru, they don't have any interest to us, you know, but, you know, if they're actually seriously doing it, then we'd like to be connected with those people. So that's my input on that. Hopefully that answers your question. Feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is James Haney. I've left some comments. Send me a private message. Drop a question in the group. We want to answer your questions. Uh, and we want to help you in, as much as we can. So with that, I have nothing else. Ray, go ahead and close us out. Okay, well, that's, I think um, this massive passive Facebook page is for those kinds of questions or anything real estate related. Don't ask questions like, how do I wholesale? Because nobody's going to type a book as an answer. Uh, we, might give you, we might give you references of where to go. We know a few people. In fact, there was a lady in that room, Vina, who's written books on wholesaling. So we might give you her, give, send her link to you so you know um, how to connect with, with people like Vina. And there's, um, that's what we try to do at Massive Passive. We make Massive Passive more about real estate education than anything else. So, yeah, I, man, that hour went by pretty fast. On that note, we're out. Ray, remember tomorrow we have that interview uh, with Darlington, and we're going to be posting that in the group. So stay tuned for that. And then Saturday we have our radio show. Uh, and you can find that at massivepassiveshow.com and has all of our events. And with that being said, good night all, and we will see you guys later. Thank you, Hal.